What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on with limits at infinity. We got these two limits here to solve and notice that these limits here, they all contain square roots, which we haven't dealt with yet in the previous examples. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that and it's not too bad. One thing I want to mention is that notice that these square roots here, they all have one expression under them. So we got the square root of x or here we got the third root of x. Here we got the square root of 2x. So notice how there's no square roots where we're adding multiple expressions. So like let's say 2x plus x squared or something like that. It's just the square root of 2x. It's just that one expression. And in the future videos we're going to be covering how to solve limits at infinity that have these multiple expressions under a square root. So I just wanted to make a note of that. So number one, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 root x plus x squared over 4x squared minus x. So first thing I like to do when I see something like this is take all of the square roots and change them to have rational exponents. So this square root of x here, I'm going to change to be 3x to the power of a half. The square root of x, x to the power of a half, those are the same thing. Then we got this plus x squared over 4x squared minus x. And I actually forgot to write the limit here. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity. Another point I want to make about this limit is notice that it can't be the limit as x approaches negative infinity because of this square root of x here, right? So all the x values have to be greater than or equal to zero and it also can't be x values that make the denominator equal to zero. So that's why we have a positive infinity here and not a negative infinity. So what you want to do here is actually the same thing that we were doing in previous examples. You want to divide everything by x to the power of the highest power in the denominator or the degree of the uh, denominator. Notice the degree here is 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything and divide it by x squared. So this 3x to the power of a half divided by x squared, this x squared here, going to divide by x squared, the 4x squared, and then this x here as well. All right, same thing as we're multiplying that whole denominator by 1 over x squared and then multiplying this whole numerator by 1 over x squared. So we're multiplying this entire expression by 1 because 1 over x squared over 1 over x squared is just 1. And then what you want to do here is you want to simplify. So notice how x to the power of a half over x to the 2, what's that going to give us? Well x to the power of a half, that's like 0 0.5 and then we have x to the power of 2, so 0 0.5 minus 2 would give us x to the negative 1.5 or 1 over x to the 1.5. And if you don't want to work with decimals, because we're working with fractions here, it's basically 1 over x to the power of 3 over 2. Right, so 1 half minus 2 is 3 over 2, and that's at the bottom. So this here would simplify to 3 over x to the power of 3 over 2. And then this would be x squared over x squared is just 1. Then we have 4x squared over x squared, that's just 4, minus x over x squared, that simplifies to 1 over x. So now what's going to be happening is um, whenever you got these square roots, these single terms under a square root, the only difference between these questions and the ones previous where there were no square roots, it was just polynomials in the numerator and denominator, is now you're going to have to be working with fractions. So the algebra is going to be a bit more of a headache, but it's still not too bad. And then from here, once you have everything in this format, so this is actually the exact same 
as this. This and this are the same expression. But now what we could do is we could plug in this x value of infinity. And if you remember from the previous video, I said the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of 1 over, or actually rather a constant over x to the power of r, where r is some kind of rational number greater than 0, that's going to be 0. Right, so notice that 3 over 2, that's a rational number, so we got a constant over x to the power of a rational number, limit as x approaches infinity of that, that's just going to be um, 0. The 1 we keep, then we got the 4 minus 1 over infinity, that would be 0. And so we end up having 1 over 4 as the answer to this limit. And then moving on to number 2, I took this limit, wrote it up there. So we got 4x root x minus x minus 7 times the third root of x all over 5 minus 4x minus x root 2x. We're finding the limit as x approaches infinity of this right here. So notice this one's a little bit more complex than this one because we have sometimes square root expressions mix with regular expressions with x. Same thing down here. We got the x and then the root 2x. So as usual, first thing I like to do is take all of the um, ra uh, square roots and turn them to rational exponents. So here we would have 4x. This x is like to the power of 1. And then this is like x to the power of a half. Then we got this x by itself, minus 7. And then the third root of x, we would change that to x to the power of 1 over 3. All over, we got 5 minus 4x minus uh, x root 2x. Now, root 2x, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and split it up into root 2 times root x. I'm going to sort of split up the variable and the uh, constant. If you remember, this is a rule where whenever you have two things multiplying under a square root, you can just split up those two things. And it doesn't matter if it's a square root or an nth root, like a third root or a fourth root, you can still split them up as long as that n stays uh, consistent. So that's what I'm going to do with the uh, root 2x. So I'm going to rewrite this expression here as uh, I'm going to bring the root 2 in front and then I'll have x and then the square root of x, remember it was a root 2 times root x, that square root of x I'm going to rewrite as x to the power of a half. And so continuing this, actually you know what, I'm going to continue this over here. So. Um, now what I like to do is I like to combine all the x's so they have one exponent. So notice x to the power of 1 times x to the power of a half. We can add the exponents if we're multiplying two exponents with the same base. So we would have the limit as x approaches infinity <coughs> of 4x, 1 plus 1 over 2 is 3 over 2. Minus x minus 7x to the power of 1 over 3. All over... 5 minus 4x minus root 2, and same thing, I got x to the power of 1, x to the power of a half, I'm going to combine those to be x to the power of 3 over 2. Right, so now notice we took this and changed it so all of the x values or all the expressions have one x value, not multiple x values like here. And like here, and then I also change all the square roots to have rational exponents. And so now what you do is you actually follow the exact same process. So you want to divide everything by x to the power of the highest power in the denominator. And notice what's the highest power in the denominator in this case? Well, we got 1 here, and then we got 3 over 2, which is like 1.5. So notice 3 over 2 is the highest uh, power. So I'm going to take everything, all the expressions, and divide them by x to the power of 3 over 2. So this 4x to the power of 3 over 2, I'm going to divide by 
x to the power 3 over 2 minus x over x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 7x to the power of 1 over 3 divided by x to the power of 3 over 2. And then everything in the denominator, same thing. Divide by x to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4x over x to the power of 3 over 2 minus root 2 x to the power of 3 over 2 divided by x to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, and then I'm going to continue this here. So let's simplify all of these. Notice x to the power of 3 over 2, x to the power of 3 over 2, those cancel out. So we'll be left with 4 right there. Here we'll have x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of 3 over 2. So what we could do is we could subtract those two exponents. So we would have 1 minus 3 over 2. Now to subtract these two, notice that this is a fraction, so we change the 1 to have a 2 over 2 minus 3 over 2, and that would give us negative 1 over 2. So 1 minus 3 over 2 gives us negative 1 over 2, which would be x to the negative 1 over 2, which ends up being 1 over x to the power of 1 over 2. Because that's a negative exponent, we bring that down. Right? So 3 over 2 is greater than uh, 1, and so you know that there's going to be an x in that uh, denominator. Whenever this is greater than the top, then we're going to be left with an x in the denominator. Whenever you have, if these were like switched, so we had 3 over 2 up here and then 1, then we would have x to the power of positive a half. We'd be left with it at the top. Okay, so this here would be minus 1 over x to the power of a half minus, we got this 7, and notice we got 1 over 3, 3 over 2. 3 over 2 is larger than 1 over 3, so we're going to be left with x to the power of something at the bottom. So we would do 1 over 3 minus 3 over 2. If we get a common denominator between these, this would be like 2 over 6 minus, uh, what, uh, 9 over 6? And so we'd end up with negative 7 over 6. I believe that's right. 2 over 6, yeah, looks good to me. So this x would have an exponent 7 over 6. 1 over 3 minus 3 over 2 gives us 7 over 6. Uh, and then all over, uh, simplify all these. 5 over x to the power of 3 over 2, that doesn't simplify. So let's just leave it minus 4 over x to the power of 1 over 3 over 2. We did that up here. That ended up being x to the power of a half left in the denominator. And then over here, notice how these 3 x to the power of 3 over 2s cancel out. So we're just left with minus root 2. And so now this here is the exact same as this expression. Both of them are the same, but now that it's in this format, we could plug in this x to the power of infinity for all of them. So notice that this would be 0, this would be 0, this would be 0, this would be 0, because they're all in that format, the constant over x to the power of r. And so we'd be left with 4 over negative root 2, or negative 4 over root 2, if we bring that negative to the uh, numerator. And so that's the answer right there. And a lot of times, certain textbooks, they may show you the answer without a square root in the denominator, so they'll rationalize it. So this would be like root 2. You multiply by root 2 over root 2, so you end up having negative 4 root 2 over root 2 times root 2 is 2, and then negative 4 over 2, that simplifies to negative 2. And then we have that root 2. So either this here or this here, they're both the exact same thing. If you plug both of those into your calculator, you'll get the exact same decimal. Just sometimes textbooks will show this answer instead of that one. So I thought I would make a note of that. And so that's how you deal with these kind of limits at infinity where you have these uh, rational or uh, square roots and then you turn them to rational exponents. And as I mentioned, um, 
notice how all of these questions, there was one expression under the square root. And what we're going to be doing in future videos is showing you how to deal with stuff that has multiple expressions under the square root where you're adding or subtracting multiple expressions. So we'll have stuff like, like uh, let's say the square root of 3x squared minus 5x. What if this was part of the limit? How do you deal with that? Or maybe even the fourth root of 5x to the 4 minus 6x squared. How do you deal with something like that if it's part of the limit? Right? So we'll deal with that in future videos.